So this morning, we hear of saint, we hear of Jesus saying that he did not come to bring peace, but he came to bring division. And that's always a difficult text for us. It's always a difficult text. What Jesus does not, did not come to bring is a false peace. A false peace in which we, we just say and do things to appease people. And, 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 but rather, Jesus wants a peace that is established on the truth. A peace that is established on the truth of who he is and, and upon what he stands for. But I know I like all the and drama. So, you know, there's no shortage of that in the church. And so yesterday there was a firestorm that created divisions. One on the left, one on the right, who wrong, who right, who say this, who say the other. And you know with the, the social media culture, there's never the, the, the fact-checking, there's never the going back to, the, to sources, there's never looking at what the person actually sa says. So the, the social media really is a space where you have a whole bunch of things being said, but, but you don't have people getting to the substance of what and what there is. So this morning, I will take the opportunity to bring some clarity to the divisions that have been created, left, right, and center, all right? And help us to continue the, the, the place of reflecting and understanding what God is calling us to do in the midst of a world that is so antsy, a world that is quick uh, to, to, to be judgmental, and, and a world that has its own ideology and very often imposes it on the church and does not hear the, the, the position that the church is coming from. So yes, it is a statement by Pope Francis in which he alleged, it is alleged that Pope Francis called for the passage of civil union laws evoked a firestorm of emotions across the si both sides of the Catholic and secular divide, all right? One person texted me and said, Father, I am confused. I'm confused by everything that is going on. I, I say, well, I too. <laughs> but the confusion wasn't with what the Pope said, it was with why people were making all of this unnecessary noise when there was, really, there was, there was very little new, uh, newness to what that how the church understands itself. Let us not start with homosexuality, but with marriage this morning. St. Augustine, one of the fourth century fathers of the church, he was one of the, the first thinkers that did a systematic understanding of what marriage was about. And what St. Augustine did, he held up the two ends of marriage. One, procreation, and two, the good of the spouses. And St. Augustine said every marriage is based on this. So the good of the spouses is that a marriage, a marriage is, a, is a space where both spouses are there in fidelity for one another and offer one another that comfort, that care, that love. And, and that is a space. But marriage is also the space in, con, in that context in which it must always be open to procreation. It is that, and if it is always open to procreation, then there must always be complementarity within marriage. So there, therefore, it follows that marriage is always an act between a man and a woman. And therefore, um, by extension, homosexuality in a sense is automatically understood as outside of of the church's understanding of marriage because it closes itself off to the openness of marriage. Even if, even if a homosexual couple may, may live a faithful life, they can never be naturally open to the good of marriage. And, and hence, the church says of homosexual relations that they are intrinsically wrong, disordered, because there's not the naturalness. There's not the naturalness um, that by which that act can take place. And so it has been the consistent teaching of the church from witnessed to by the Old Testament, the New Testament in Scripture, and the consistent teaching of all the popes, Pope Francis, Pope 
Pope John Paul II, a great defender of the truth, and Pope Benedict, that such an act and such a union is wrong. And, and that's the church's teaching. All right, so let me repeat that. To, bring, to make sure that your blood pressure falls, to make sure that, <laughs> that, that you know, you're able to sleep at night, and to make sure that you don't text me all hours in the morning for answers. It has been the consistent teaching of the church that every act of sexu homosexuality and homosexual union is wrong. Full stop. That's, that is the consist and, and I just gave you the, because it is not open, it cannot be open to the good of marriage, which is procreation and the complementarity of the spouses. So in the book of Genesis, we are told that God made Adam and Eve, and therefore there is a complementarity of the spouses. Because of that, we said it is not, there is not a nat it is not a natural act. And therefore, the church judges it as intrinsically wrong. That does not mean to say that persons who are, have homosexual orientation or practicing homosexuals are bad people. And it is in this context we can understand what the Pope says, they are part of the family of God. So the Pope says they are part of the family of God. They can't be excluded. And so, of course, because the people who come to church are all not saints, some people living in, in, in common law relationships, but we don't tell them, don't come to church. We say, no, you are part of the family. And we will journey with you until you are able to work out this situation, until we can rectify this situation, so that you can meet the ideal, which is marriage. And so when the Pope says, you are part of the family of God, he's saying, you are welcome to church. However, you may not be able to come to the table of the Lord. So there's a limit, a welcome to the church as we welcome each person. But because we judge that this act, just as someone living in a common law relationship, is intrinsically wrong, you're not welcome to the table of the Lord yet. Unless, un until you work out that situation so that you may then be welcome to the table of the Lord. And, and, and so we have to understand that in that basis. Pope Francis, however, knows that a post-Christian world, that homosexuality is part of the lived experience of many persons. Many persons today. And so it's not, it, is, and, and it is not something that is hidden anymore. It's something that is open, and people openly live that way by their choice. The, in a post-Christian world, the church doesn't have that power again to beat people on their heads and say, you must do that or you must do this. The church, we, don't, we, don't know, we are no longer living in a Christian culture. And we have to face that fact. We can be very hypocritical at times because we want sometimes the Christian, the Christian culture, but we're not living it. But it in, and so it's very important that we recognize that. And so it's important for us, therefore, to offer the pastoral care that is needed for those persons who may be in that orientation, as we do for every person. So it's not, it's not just for this person or that person. My dear friends, the church has that responsibility to offer pastoral care. And it is in this light that the Catechism of the Catholic Church says, all forms of discrimination against homosexual persons should be defended. And that's important. All forms of discrimination. The Pope is alleged to agree with the law supporting civil unions. This would mean that there is a development in Catholic Church's official position. And this is the, this is the novelty, that the Pope is agreeing with the law, that a civil law that is saying that persons of homosexual orientation or practicing homosexual union would be able to receive particular benefits. So that is what that law would do. That law would en ensure that one of the persons in this relationship would get a pension or get medical or get that. So the law, in, in the understanding is 
Pope is seeing it as a way of defending discrimination against the person. It's a, it's a way of defending discrimination against these persons and saying, well, we don't, we don't believe that what they're doing is right. We don't believe that, that, that in, in, in that kind of relationship, but we don't agree that they should be discriminated against because we're no longer living in a, in a Christian world. So we can, and, and that's the Pope's position, that we don't agree with, with them, we don't agree with this, homosexuality, marriage. We don't agree with homosexuality. We think it's, we know it's wrong and we believe it's wrong. However, we recognize that they are living in that way and they can't be discriminated against. And, and so that's the understanding and that's the issue at heart. That's the only issue at heart, by the way. Whether or not you agree or don't agree with that issue, that's another story. But that's the issue at heart. So let's, let's recap and let's refocus. What is the issue at heart? The issue has nothing to do with whether or not the church supports homosexuality. That is not the issue. The church does not and sees it as intrinsically wrong. Full stop. The issue at heart is persons who are in a homosexual union. The church is saying that the church is saying that the law should recognize them so that they may be able to get benefits. Whether it is pension, medical, gratuity of the spouse. My dear friends, that is the issue at heart. And whether you agree or don't agree, it does not really do anything with respect to the church's belief and understanding. It doesn't change anything. The church still holds up as an end, the, 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 the ideal of married life, as that between a man and a woman. But the church, in offering pastoral care to all, recognizes that we must look at the, our brothers and sisters with compassion and with love. Even though they may be different, they may express their sexuality in a way that we don't agree and that the church could never change, all right? So, and, 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 so th and that's important. It's important for you to understand that not even Pope Francis has the power to change what marriage is. He does not. This is the divine teaching of Jesus, and it is the dogma of the church. Not even Pope Francis has that power. So now that your blood pressure has come down, and that you understand <laughs> what are the issues in a complex world, we know, my dear friends, my dear friends, it's very important that you get in touch with the world that we are living in. The world that you grew up in has gone and not coming back. And we have to understand now how we're navigating this new world that we're living in. How are you going to navigate when your son, when your daughter comes and says, Mommy or Daddy, this is my boyfriend, and, and is your son saying a boyfriend and your daughter saying a girlfriend? How would you navigate that world? That's the question that we, have to, that we are struggling with and grappling with. What are we going to say? You're not part of the family? Is that what you're going to say? I don't know. Don't ask me. I don't know. As a priest, my role is to welcome everybody. And to show that love and care for all persons and, and, and not discriminate on any basis whatsoever, to show the face of God's love and God's mercy. Even though I don't agree with, with the positions that people take, and that is normal. Every single day when people come to my office, they make decisions that I'm not in agreement with, and I have to love them and leave them to do it. It's normal, and that's the pastor's heart. The pastor's heart is one who is able to still journey with persons even when they do things that we don't agree with and to try to be there for them. Friends, this, in, this teaching indeed is a source of great division. <laughs> great division. But we must know why there is a division because I think everything has gotten all confused. Everything has gotten all mixed up. At the heart of all that we are doing, my dear friends, 
is to recognize that the God we serve is a God who is all-encompassing love. But this love is based on truth. And it challenge, uh, challenges us in ways to reach outside of our own comfort zone, to reach outside of our, the ways in which we were raised, and to experience greater openness and greater love for those whose way of life we may not be in agreement with, and whose ways of life may not, the church will, will, will never acknowledge, would never um, affirm, would never say this is right. It just, it, that is just what it is. Yet, our heart is still to look upon them and show them the, the love that they indeed deserve because they too are still children of God. My dear friends, that is the teaching